Okay, let's talk about the AEPA middle grades math exam. And here you have the exam codes NT or NES203. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you are studying for this uh, very specific um, Arizona teacher uh, credential exam. So um, a little bit about myself. Um, I am a middle school and high school math teacher. I have not taught in the state of Arizona, but taught in other states and actually um, have taken the Praxis exam. But whether it's the Praxis, the AEPA uh, certification exams, uh, the California exams, uh, or any other state, you know, all teacher exams are pretty similar. But of course, there are state specific. Um, some tests like the Praxis apply in, in uh, multiple states where uh, AEPA you have to take uh, in Arizona. So with that being said, um, what I have here is a nice little uh, pop quiz for you, if you will, that uh, you should be able to handle if you expect to do pretty well in the AEPA middle grades math. Now, a little again, um, a little bit about myself. Um, I taught middle and high school math, but one of the things that I think um, that some of you don't want to fall into uh, is this middle grades math. You're thinking, okay, I'm gonna be teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, so I don't really need to know, you know, if I'm strong in algebra and basic geometry, I'll be okay for this exam. Actually, you really need to take a look at what's on this exam. There's, you know, uh, you really need to have a really strong background in, in a um, high school level mathematics. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. I mean, you really wanna have a command of what you're teaching because as you well know, um, in middle school, you could be teaching algebra. You certainly be teaching pre-algebra and other concepts, but you know, it's a professional certification exam and you really need to know your stuff and who knows, you might decide that you wanna go uh, from uh, middle school up to high school, okay? So studying for this exam, you know, really learning your high school, getting strong with your high school mathematics is just gonna make you a better middle school um, math teacher. I've taught both and believe me, um, you know, having the, the, the knowing the most math you can always benefits you. And I have a degree in math and I'll tell you something, even if you're strong in math, have a strong math background, you still have to study. Okay, even if you're like, oh no, I know this stuff. No, there's a lot of different things that are on the test, and you got to be ready for it. So we're going to take a look at this practice problem. Um, I will say right up front that I offer an AEPA middle grades math test prep course. Um, I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But let's get into this problem now. So I have some information. I'm kind of uh, kind of generally tell you what's going on and obviously I'm going to solve it and we'll talk about it but I have some information here um, saying given this and given this okay I'd like you to find this now I'm using the word this <laughs> very uh, specifically um, because I'm, I don't want to tell you what this is about yet because you hopefully should recognize what to do here okay now, if you don't, no, it's not the end of the world. Obviously, you got to uh, study some more. But if you uh, think you know what to do, you might want to pause the video and give it a try before I go through it. Okay, so what we have here are two functions. We have f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. So this is one function. And then I have another function over here, g of x is equal to 3x squared minus x. And so what I want you to do is to find the composite function f of g of x. So very common, this is what we call function operation. So given two functions, f and g, you can do all kinds of things with two functions, right? You can add two functions, two or more functions. You can multiply them. Okay, let's do it like this. You can subtract them. You can do different function operations, but one of the things you definitely need to know um, how to do is composite functions. And basically, you're evaluating one function with another function. So for example, if I was to evaluate f of x for two, let's kind of do this over here real quick. So I have f of x equals two x plus one. Let's use another value. Let's say I said evaluate f of x for three. So that would look like this, right? I would plug in three. I'm saying find the value of this function at, at this particular uh, when I plug in three into the into the function, what's the value of the function? So this would be three, or sorry, two times three plus one. So wherever there's an x, I'm gonna replace it with this particular value. So this is just simply evaluating a function. So this is gonna be six plus one or seven. 
Now here my input is a particular value. Okay, I'm actually plugging in and wherever I see an X, I'm going to replace this input value and just simplify it. But in this particular problem, the composite function, what I'm plugging in is another function. Okay, so I'm plugging in the g of x function, so I'm actually going to be plugging all this stuff in to wherever I see x over here. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you. Again, I, I, um, this is kind of a quick uh, video on this. Uh, it's not meant to be a full lesson, but hopefully this kind of jogs your memory. Okay, so here we have the f of x function. I'm going to be plugging in the g function into the f function. So I'm going to replace this x with the g function. So I have 2x plus 1, right? So this is the, g, uh, the f function, f of x, but this x here I'm going to replace, okay, so you see here I have these big parentheses, with the entire g function. So this is going to be 3x squared minus x. So this is f of g of x, okay? Now, once we have this set up and you're saying, okay, yeah, I plugged in the g of, g of x function into the f, func f function, so this is a composite function, then you want to go ahead and simplify. Okay, so here I'll use the distributor property. This is going to be 6x squared minus 2x plus 1, and that's it. So f of g of x would be uh, equal to this. And it's important that you know how to do composite functions. They are all uh, pretty common. Uh, well, functions in general are a huge part of mathematics. But um, one of the things or one of the areas we use uh, composite functions in is, is when we're testing for um, uh, an inverse function. So the definition of an inverse, a function inverse is f of, if, you get, if these two functions are inverses of one another, the definition would be this, f of g of x, okay, now if I plug in the f function into the g function, so g of f of x, all right, if you have two different functions where you plug in one into the other, and then vice versa, and the answer for both is x, then these two functions, f and g, would be inverses of one another. In other words, you have the f and the inverse function um, would be g of x in this case. So I kind of don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, but this is the definition of, of an inverse function at a more advanced level. Okay. Um, there's other ways of explaining it, but again, you need to know how to... Uh, uh, do composite functions. Uh, so basically, that's the whole point of this video. Hopefully, you're, you know, knocked this problem out of the stadium. It was a piece of cake for you, so that's good. Um, but again, pretty there's a pretty decent uh, amount of math uh, on this uh, particular exam. And at the middle school level, you don't want to just be of the mindset that oh, I just you know I'm going to be teaching you know, basic fractions and, you know, I've taught sixth grade, seventh grade, and I, oh, that's super important as well. But you very well could be teaching Algebra 1, okay, uh, at the eighth grade level or honors geometry. A lot of middle schools, you know, will start teaching those courses at that uh, level, and you do need to have a command of this stuff. So anyways, with that being said, um, you know, my uh, last uh, thing that I want to say to you is from one teacher to another, you know, being a teacher... Uh, the only people are, are going to understand what it takes to be teachers as an, uh, other teachers, right? It's a lot of work. You have to study for these certification exams, but um, teaching is rewarding, okay? So I, I wish you all the best uh, as a teacher. If I could help you out again, uh, study for this particular exam. Um, I'll leave the link to my um, AEPA, EA, uh, AEPA uh, middle grades math uh, prep course in the description of this video. I also have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel if you like my teaching style that uh, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. Definitely can help you prepare. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Do you think that you're going to stick with just middle school or you're going to maybe consider going to high school? Obviously high school, you know, you got to take more certification um, exams. Um, and typically... You know, you may need a subject, you need may, you may need to have, depends on what state you're in, actually have a degree in that particular subject. So if you're teaching Algebra 2 at high school level, you don't necessarily need a, a math a degree in mathematics, but you may need a math, math education degree, etc. But if you're good at math, 
you know, and if you're interested, you shouldn't let a certification exam stop you. So with that being said, I wish you all the best uh, teaching in Arizona. Thank you for your time and have a great day.